So you just went under contract and you have to think about so many things for your financing. You've got applications, appraisals, inspections, surveys, maybe even an elevation certificate, and you're in a hurry to get things done. You may wanna think of what order to do things to save yourself some money and some stress down the road. This is Ron Wysokarski with Wise Home Team Realty, and today I wanna to talk about making sure that you're not spending money unnecessarily. We have a lot of clients that get super excited, super charged when they go under contract and, and they should. It's an amazing time when you're buying a house. You know, set up a little timeline of things and expectations that would make sense. The first thing you wanna do, of course, is to put your escrow deposit down so you bind your contract. Immediately thereafter, we need to talk about the inspection period. If you've got seven or 10 or 15 days, you've got to complete all of your inspections. Make sure that the house checks out and that you're happy with it. And if it is, in most cases, it will go that way. You move on to the next step, which is your appraisal. Now, if you're going to spend a few hundred dollars, maybe 500 bucks on inspections and the same amount on an appraisal, I recommend that you do things sequentially and not simultaneously. Let's get through the inspection period. Make that first investment of money. And once everything is good to go and you're happy with that, make the next investment in the appraisal. And let's make sure the value checks out. And if you have a government loan, they may need to take additional steps to make sure that the VA or the FHA appraisal, things like the roof and the, uh, the siding, the wood rot, the termites, plumbing, electric, heating, the VA and the FHA, they're also gonna check into those things. That would really be the next thing to clear. And by this point, you've invested somewhere between 700 bucks and a thousand dollars. There's other things that you're going to need to do, but before we skip steps, that sequence is really important. See, if, if the inspections don't check out, there was really no reason to ever do the appraisal. So I would do that sequentially. Now, once the appraisal comes back and it's good and it checks out, and maybe the underwriter had to take a look at it, you'll need a few more things before closing. Insurance is something that you want to put together like in the last couple of weeks, get your quotes and get it bound, especially if it's still hurricane season. Survey and possibly an elevation certificate are things that come at the very end, probably in the last week or so or 10 days. You wouldn't necessarily want to purchase a survey for the property, which is the boundary survey, which can cost you a few hundred dollars, if the inspections or the appraisal didn't check out. And the elevation certificate, well, that would go towards your insurance. And that's going to tell a little bit more about if you're in a flood zone or not to help you get the right amount of insurance with the proper rating on it. But if you think about it, why would you put insurance on a property that did not check out for the inspections or didn't appraise? You see, if you knew up front, you probably wouldn't do that. Unfortunately, I see there are times where people are so anxious to get everything done in the first week, they pay for inspections, pay for appraisals, pay for ins elevation certificates, pay for surveys, get their insurance ready to go. They can be two, three thousand dollars into it in a couple days of inspection period. If something goes sideways, they've gone through a lot of work. They spent a lot of money. And by the way, that's money they're not going to get back. It's not a refund situation. If you purchase those, those services, you know, those are yours to keep. I don't know how many surveys of properties I want to own for properties that I don't own. So you're under contract, you're super excited, and all I'm asking you to do is pump the brakes a little bit and do things sequentially. That way you're only making investments that make sense. I hope this is helping you with the timelines between the contract and the closing. There's a lot of steps in between, but those are the biggies. Things, every time you write a check, I just want you to think, did we clear the last hurdle? If you like this content, comment below. Let us know how you feel about it, or if you have an idea for a future topic, well, I'd love to know that too. This is Ron Weisakarski at Wise Home Team Realty.